good morning good afternoon good evening everybody green morning green afternoon green evening everyone wherever you are world over all our brothers and sisters those are joining from the different parts of the world because our international chamber for service industry has got our brothers and sister because 30 million non resident indians those are spread world over in different countries we are so grateful to you you all are doing your own service wherever you are either you are working with someone or you have created a work for someone and you are doing so much commendable work so our deepest salutation regards and gratitude to all of you and all the natives in the respective countries also we are so grateful that you join us you come for various programs and we are doing back to back the programs monday to sunday and sunday we have got four webinars with you and it's indeed a proud privilege that today in our journey in our efforts in our humble steps when we are having 82nd webinar sunday the 9th of august at 12:30 hours indian standard time where the focus of the entire journey is making education relevant but when we talk about making education relevant it has got different parts it has got different permutation combinations and entire universe ecosystem is a part of because education is the motherboard on that there is a nature there is an environment there is a wildlife there is a forest there is that there's so much whatever is happening in the universe the base is education so that's why in the same series and it's a proud privilege for our chamber this afternoon we have got a very eminent and a distinguished guest dr am singh ji he is from the indian forest service he is a principal chief conservator of forest and head of the forest force forest department government of assam on 9th of august 2020 in the afternoon almost at 1232 we extend a very hearty and a very deep welcome to dr arvind madhav singh ji i happen to know him for quite some time i will unveil and i will share what all i have been learning and i have been getting from him from time to time on various occasions ladies and gentlemen if you recollect our chamber icsi international chamber for service industry has dedicated last 6 years right from the time the present setup and all that what we have got and we have dedicated from 2014 onward the entire energy and synergy in the northeast part of india and of course linking it world over but particularly with the asean because our present president is also from thailand and the next president is going to be from malaysia so asean and northeast plays very important role for us now what is this journey and why are you having this webinar why this particular program this afternoon what do we wish to achieve and as we get new members new entrants so i wish to share couple of slides with you so that all of us we are on the common frequency and we understand what exactly is the purpose of education and purpose of this particular webinar this afternoon ladies and gentlemen our chamber icsi started its journey from 1994 in india initially came punjabi parvasi divas and from there in 2003 when we met the honorable then the prime minister of india and he gave the new dimension and the vision and the scope from punjabi parvasi divas it shifted to bhartiya parvasi divas and now it's such a pleasure you have got vibrant gujarat vibrant rajasthan vibrant madhya pradesh vibrant tamil nadu vibrant telangana and today's distinguished guest when i talk about and when i share with you there was advantage assam also in february 2018 and this gentleman dedicated so much of time and he gave so much of vision to us at that point of time what exactly can be done in a services sector as far as northeast is concerned and what all new dimensions can be given now monday to friday all of you join us from 7 to 8 pm indian standard time in the evening and that time it's early morning in canada united states latin america by the time fit people finish their lunch in europe and then we come to central asia middle east then we go to asean 
and of course from india from different part people join us so what is this journey monday to friday 7 to 8 pm we will discuss with you what is the significance and particularly at this point of time as per unesco 1.86 billion youth they are not in a position to go to schools colleges universities polytechnic institutions and they are locked at their respective places educators are trying their level best to reach them and to give them whatever best they can give but at the same time the different fraternities in their own way trying to empower the entire ecosystem we started this particular program on 5th of june now 5th of june is a world environment day and today when we are going to talk with our distinguished guest esteemed guest environment plays very important role education environment flora and fauna herbal greenery and of course i sleep tourism i get up tourism i think tourism i dream tourism i spent my entire life last 50 years of my humble way when i look at it today when i am 70 years old and when i look back i'm deeply associated education wise academics wise and it was a proud privilege that while being with the ministry of tourism government of india i set up the first national institute for ministry of tourism and at the same time started india's first mba tourism with the entire team and the stakeholders now when we talk about environment today everybody is talking about climate change everybody is talking about and when the research which is coming from various quarters it shows that world over there is going to be a shortage of the drinking water consumable water so water conservation we have taken the campaign when we are talking about making education relevant we are requesting all the parents children are at home with you at this point of time teach them how to save every drop of water jal sanrakshan is very important for all of us every saturday morning we come with buddhism what is the relevance of 500 million plus people world over buddha's teachings in today's education and we just had the program yesterday and the next one is coming on 15th of august on india's independence day every saturday evening we bring to you ayurveda herbal yoga meditation naturopathy nutrition organic and everything related to nature today's distinguished guest is going to give us a total vision what exactly the area of the northeast part of india what exactly is happening over there as far as the green part is concerned the forest part is concerned the green coverage is concerned uh, with education how it could be related and couple of other things we'll be talking and at the same time there are a lot of herbal plants available in the northeast part of india why not we should try and work out a strategy and with his vision with his dynamism we will try and work it out what could be done in herbal tourism green tourism nature tourism eco tourism flora and fauna tourism what could be done in wildlife tourism in that particular part sunday morning this is the second webinar which we are having now we just finished with the morning program and that was on shrimad bhagavad gita the relevance of today's education with india's apex and professor satendra bhiman from the woodbury university burbank california he came live like you are going to have now the distinguished guest all the way from assam from guwahati with us this evening at 5 pm indian standard time you will have india asean program where all the 10 countries 650 million population they all get together with us and we try and deliberate and discuss what could be done and of course once again in this entire series focus is northeast part of india because that is something which honorable prime minister also calls ashta lakshmi now ladies and gentlemen then comes 7 pm in the evening you will have a micro small and medium enterprise so maybe one of the area related to forest related to greenery related to herbal could be linked somewhere with the msme sector also so we would request our distinguished guest on that as well 12th of august please don't forget 
United Nation has declared this particular day as a World Youth Day. So when we are talking about making education relevant, this is going to be a historic day. 100,000, if I tell in Indian language, 1 lakh youth from the world over are joining this particular platform for morning 9 a.m. to evening 9 p.m., 12 hours non-stop. Youth, youth, and youth. And when we talk about India, we talk about youth. When we talk about India's future, we talk about youth because India has got the youngest population. It will have in future also youngest population. So how do we understand what all youth have got to give to the entire world? Our ICSI, International Chamber for Service Industry, our various teams world over in the different countries, they have made this golden triangle in last three and a half months and they sent across to us. And up to 31st July, what we have come on is, the basic part is, the world is now going to get the new normals and the new norms. The B2B, which was earlier known as business to business, will now be termed and named as back to basics. So B2B will remain, but it will be back to basics. You've got to live with the minimum. You've got to live with the basics of life. Agar aap apne ghar ke prangan mein koi sabjiyan uga sakte hain, organic sabjiyan le sakte hain, kuch bhi aisa kar sakte hain. I would request our visionary and our dynamic, vibrant uh, guest, esteemed guest who is coming today. He can give us some dimension. What could be done in agriculture, animal husbandry, couple of other areas, what we can think about it so that people can be Atmanibhar, what Honorable Prime Minister is talking again and again. Second part is health and herbal and happiness and holistic healing. That is your physical and mental. Both the fitness are very important. And third part is education will never get back to what it was in month of January and February. It's going to be digital. It's going to be e-learning. It's going to be a flip learning. It's going to be so much of outside classroom. So there also the practical part will come. So today's distinguished guest will talk to us and he'll give us some new dimension because SEZ should not be further known as special economic zone. Rather, in the northeast part of India, we should call it a special education zones because that would be more appropriate if we bring more hub. And this all has to be done on sustainable mode. Our chamber, final slide before I introduce my today's guest. Ladies and gentlemen, whatever human mind can conceive and believe, it's very important for all of us to understand. Whatever human mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. Let's come together. Let's make education relevant. It should be relevant to our day-to-day -day life. And when we are talking about making education relevant under the global confluence of educators, motivators, technocrats, and counselors, and experts from the world over. You're more than welcome to come as a panelist, or you can send us your suggestions. We would be more than happy to have you with us. You can send a mail to us at innovation. And when I talk about it, so ladies and gentlemen, not to wait anymore. Like we talk about in the media entertainment industry, you invite the celebrities and you say that today's celebrity such and such, let me extend a very warm welcome from our chamber ICSI to Dr. Arvind Madhav Singh Ji. He's a principal chief conservator of forest and head of the forest force, forest department, government of Assam. Dr. Arvind Madhav Singh Ji, he's an Indian uh, forest service department officer. He's a bureaucrat, 1986 batch from Assam segment of Assam Meghalaya Garden. He's a man of dynamic personality. And during his illustrious service period of more than three decades, he rendered service to many posts in central government, as well as in Indian government, that is state government. We are talking about Assam at present. I saw him initially in the central government when he was joint secretary in the Ministry of Donor. And all the times in all meetings, wherever it took place, always he was talking about something innovative, something creative he was not he was never happy if it is done in a routine way 
whatever is happening he always wanted something new something innovative something creative and that's what today's government has brought in the new education policy 2020 also he had represented india in many international forums such as united nation forum of forestry fao world forestry congress and sites etc he was one of the expert member of itto yokohama in japan on behalf of not only india but represented whole southeast asia from 2011 to 2013 and that's a great contribution of the person and dr singh is also an expert in joint forest management sustainable forest management and forest certification at national and international level and member of different committees ministry of commerce and industry government of india has conferred and given him an award for his outstanding contribution in developing the standards of certification for handicraft industries in 2018 i put my hands in his honor and great salutation because handicraft craft art and uh, all that areas related have got a great future for the youth professionally dr singh had presented many papers on various contemporary issues in commonwealth forestry association iufro itto world forestry congress global bamboo summit INBAR and also co-authored a book on forest certification published by Terry so with these words ladies and gentlemen let me drop the curtains and bring right in the center stage our distinguished guest today this afternoon we have got with us ladies and gentlemen right over here and we extend him a very hearty welcome dr am singh ji from the government of assam a great welcome to you sir a uh, hearty welcome to you and with us also dr barbara uh, mas she is joining us from uk but i'll have you later to propose a word of thanks because she is also dedicated and devoted to basically towards environment protection animal protection wildlife protection now sir when we start today's session i want to have it a very informal session and i wish to have all your experience and whatsoever you gathered as a great cerebrum you know uh, when i saw you as a joint secretary in the ministry of donor in the government of india and then after i met you in advantage uh, assam a great show a big show which you and couple of other programs which our chamber organized in guwahati and other parts of northeast part of india you have always contributed and you always think that something more innovative has to be done so when we talk about education when we talk about environment when we talk about forest when we talk about your international experiences kindly give the give the vision from your side what all has been done in the past what is to be done in present and what should be done in future with these words a very hearty welcome to dr am singh ji uh thank you dr sharma uh, first of all i am honored to be a part of your series of webinar where you are trying to discuss making education relevant and uh, since you have mentioned about my journey of more than 3 decades having different uh, sectors or areas where i have worked uh, i would like to discuss a very in an informal way about my views and my thoughts it's not only limited to forest and environment because you have just discussed about uh, national education policy 2020 how we are going to make uh, relevant education in terms of uh, environmental education uh, what is the need of the hour so what i am trying to start with because definitely if we would like to discuss this thing in a very wide forum then we have to start with some bit and i will start with some of the factual statement uh, starting with the national level then i would like to come to the region that is the northeast and then trying to focus upon my state that is assam so starting with that i will just try to give couple of factual statement which will give a you can say base of our discussion if you 
if you think about the india then we are just covering about 2.5% of the land mass but we are having 16% of the human population and 18% of the cattle population of the world so you think about that how much pressure are we exerting on our land mass despite that if we are maintaining our forest and in terms of if you just see a couple of reports which has been published by forest survey of india and when i was a part of uh, government of india and i was attending one of the forums at fao where they were appreciating the efforts of our country that how we are preserving conserving and protecting our forest so that is a major achievement what i would like to tell about that another aspect is that we, we know about that how much population do we have so to to maintain a balance between conservation and development that is also one of the important aspect which uh, we are dealing with that and uh, coming to that if you just see about this northeastern region and then you think about that the the area which we are covering about 170541 square kilometer and in terms of geographical area uh, vis a vis forest this 65% of the geographical area is under forest and tree cover and you think about the national if you if you talk about the national average where we just have 21.67% of the forest cover and 2.89% of the tree cover and if you add on both then you will find that 24.56% is the only forest and tree cover we have at the national level so we are i mean you can say that more than 2.5 or almost three times uh, green cover but how to manage them how to make them more sustainable how to be much more uh, friendly with the local uh, villagers or those who are living uh, on the on the fringe side that is the challenge which we we all are facing here and definitely development is another aspect so you have just mentioned about that uh, when i was a part of uh, ministry of donor and uh, as a joint secretary when we were dealing with all the sectors it was very difficult to keep a balance because as a forester by core of core of the heart my basic uh, you can say affiliation or you can say interest was that how we are going to preserve that so in that context when we we discuss about that and another aspect which you would like to focus upon that we all know that uh, we are having certain international commitments also it's not like that that we are confining our forest and environment only related to the national level so we are a member of gfra we are having a red plus we have natcom we have vor so so many i mean can say international commitments where we have for example i will tell you about that we are uh, just a commitment which we have given in paris uh, convention 2015 that we are going to have additional carbon sink of 2.5 to 3 billion tons in is you can say carbon dioxide equivalent so how by addition more tree cover and forest cover so if if you want to achieve that uh, additional carbon sink of this much of quantity you have to go for a massive effort definitely you need to to do that so coming that first i would like to give uh, some sort of a uh, stems of uh, northeastern region then would like to come about the issues and challenges which which we are facing about that and then coming back the human resource these are uh, issues because that is very important unless until we will not keep a balance we will not understand uh, how we are going to deal with them it is very difficult so so coming back and then if you just see, see to it how we are going to see so uh, if you talk about uh, northeast uh, we all know about that uh, whether you talk about tripura if you talk about nagaland we have diversified uh, uh, forest uh, if you talk about we have uh, deciduous forest also we have rain forest also we have riverine forest also we have grasslands also so so much diversified forest types and if you talk about uh, the protected areas which we have almost 5% of the area in assam if you that we are covering we have five national parks also we have 18 wildlife sanctuaries also so so all these things if you talk about biodiversity hot spot and if you talk about northeastern region then we, we we are having this sort of eastern himalayan biodiversity region it is one of the two biodiversity hotspots in the country so we are we are just the whole northeast region or all is a part of this eastern himalayan biodiversity region and that's why we are so much rich in flora and fauna and biodiversity and then if you talk about uh, unesco natural heritage site then there is a kaziranga there is a manas 
Uh, so if you talk about uh, biosphere reserve, then then we have so all sort of biodiversity. You can say whether it is internationally recognized or nationally recognized. We are there representing Northeast or Assam in that particular. So keeping that base and having a challenge for all of us, definitely we need to understand that what is the important issues here. And I'm just coming back and then just flagging off some of the issues which are very important here. In terms of northeast, and particularly I, since I'm head of the forest force in Assam, so I will just deal with that. Some of the issues are that consolidation of forest boundaries. If you think about that in Assam and in the whole northeast region, the problem is about the notified uh, forest area. We call it a reserve forest or protected or proposed reserve forest. So if it is notified, then it is a notified. And if this is not not properly notified, this is another class unclassed state forest. So here the number of or the percentage of unclassed state forest is almost 34 percent. Unless until we will not address those uh, these 34 percent in terms of consolidation of the boundaries, it will be very difficult to manage the forest in future to come. So my only and then if you talk about uh, this uh, notified forest, we have 312 reserve forests in Assam. We have 145 proposed reserve forests that is in 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 a process of notifying as a reserve. Forest. So all, all this, this is covering about 66%. So one thing is about that, how you are going to manage or you can say give some sort of value, whatever notified forest do you have under your jurisdiction. Another aspect is that now you are having this unclassed state forest of 34%, how you are going to consolidate it. And we all know about that, how much developmental works are going on. And like uh, other parts of the country, Northeast is also willing to have roads and connectivity and that's the reason which i was discussing that when i was a part of uh, dona then definitely we were giving much more focus on agriculture we are thinking about uh, assam or northeast is so much rich in fruits and, and and flowers so how we are going to have a good food processing center here or fruit processing center what what best can be done so the direct people's engagement and the direct profits can be given to them so that is another aspect which which we are, we are dealing with that so in, in keeping a balance into it and then as a head of the forest forest force having much more focus upon so one of the issues is about consolidation of the forest boundary then another aspect which which we are uh, i mean very much concerned about settlement of rights of eligible forest dwellers under forest rights 2006 that is very important because we all know about that and as per the intervention of the supreme court also we need to settle here, the problem is this, whenever they talk about that, those people, those who reside inside the forest areas, definitely they have to have certain documents into it or they have to prove that how many years they are there. So still there is a problem we are uh, doing with a lot of committees with the district administration and then handling it. But unless until we will not come to a figure, we will not come to uh, some sort of solution for that. It is one of the concerns, one of the issues for the department here and it is not only i'm confining to the sun even for the other northeastern states also we need to address this issue which is very important about that then the third important aspect is removal of all ineligible occupations on forest because we all know about that so much i mean people are i mean depending on that and then there is a some sort of shortage of land of landmass so some of the areas are approached unless until we will not have and that's all these three issues are linked into Unless until you will not have a proper consolidation of the forest boundaries, then you will come to know that how much areas are being enclosed or how much areas where the illegal occupations of the, the people are there. So then we need to have a, some sort of post action or action plan for that, that how we are going to remove that. Then I have just mentioned about uh, the aspect of green, uh, increasing the green cover. We need to think about massive reforestation because whatever, if, if you talk about Paris uh, commitment or if you talk about our national forest policy also, where we are talking about to cover 33% as per our national forest policy. Although in Assam or Northeast region, we are much more than the uh, target, but definitely we need to have uh, some sort of value uh, addition uh, forest types in, in Northeast. So that is important. Then another aspect, although we are very rich in wildlife, but wildlife corridor restoration, that is very important because we all know about that the the wildlife elephant, for example, wildlife animal population is more than 6,000. Here in Assam, I'm just talking about. And then uh, they, they all have having their habitats. 
now due to development due to you can say shrinkage of their habitats it is very difficult for them because they, it's a free ranging animal and how they will move so that's why if you will just see the man animal conflict is day by day or year by year is increasing in northeast particularly in assam so how, unless until we will not notify this wild wildlife corridors or you can say animal corridors and we will not restore them the problem is this just by mere notifying it without giving any legal support will not help it although supreme court is intervening into it and they, they are trying to give some sort of directions to the state government or to the central government but still there is a lot of need to do that so that we need to address about that and that is a very important aspect for example in kaziranga national park there are nine animal corridors and now as per the central empowered committee and as per the supreme court intervention they are asking us to notify these nine animal corridors or wildlife corridors so that is also an important aspect which we need to understand about that another aspect which i feel about that and that is very important to to address is that although we have five national parks or 18 wildlife sanctuaries and then we are very rich into it unless until because uh, even this present scenario of covid 19 and after post uh, covid 19 definitely we need to think about changing the mandate and objectives of the protected areas also because you have just mentioned about the tourism also we need to understand about that now what sort of tourism do we require in our protected areas because now you cannot think of you cannot call mass tourists into it and then trying to have some sort of so definitely we need to think, uh, think something more about wellness uh, yoga hygiene some sort of thing where uh, you will give them a chance to stay there understanding the nature without disturbing much disturbance disturbance there so i'm just trying to find out and i'm trying to discuss with my protected area managers and with my chief id warden is what that we need to have usd for each protected area or national park if if kaziranga is famous for one mohan rhino then definitely there should be some other usd for manas then there should be something different for debru saikwa or um, nameri or for ura so all these things we need to understand and we need to have another aspect which i am thinking about habitat management is very important so so because what is happening that lot of shrinkages have been i mean done for these wild animals and then they are coming out from their habitat area so unless until you will not give them or restore these habitats for them then there are many chances where they will come out and then there will be lot of conflict so the important aspect for the department or for the government is to to understand and to give much more importance and focus on habitat management then uh, the whole northeast is not only limited to this this issue conservation revival and restoration of wetlands and water fields because uh, if you just see whether it is loktak uh, lake in manipur if you talk about in our deepor bill in assam It is. It's a, it's a. If you think about full of wetlands, the whole northeast region is 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 full of, full of wet wetlands. But how we are going to restore them? There is again, you can say, a competition, or you can say, trying to encroach and then trying to shrinkage of those wetland areas into. So it's a high time uh, for the policymakers, for the bureaucrats, for the social workers, also the NGOs to think about to restore and revive the wetlands and water fields. that is very important because unless until you will not keep a balance you will just mention about one of your webinar is related to water conservation that is a very important aspect in north east that you will find water everywhere but if you talk about drinking water in the north east there is a shortage so we need to think about that we need to understand about the intricacies and how we are going to restore the water or the drinking water in the north east uh, that is also a need to to understand Uh, another aspect which i would like to focus upon that there is a lot of stress on urban or peri urban green infrastructure because uh, we need to understand now there is a lot of developments a lot of towns have come although northeast is still full of greeneries but definitely we need to give much more focus there may be a situation uh, will come in near future where you will not find good areas where you can go there and use as oxygen bank because you have to you have to have so now what government of india is now focusing uh, through this nagarvan udyan scheme or any sort of schemes where we need to have couple of uh, trees or couple of you can say combination of 
whether it is herbs, shrubs, climbers, but species where people can go there, sit there, and can be used these easy areas as oxygen bag. So then, unless until you will not give much more focus on your urban areas or peri-urban areas, then it is another issue which is which is very difficult. We need to understand and we need to address immediately about that. Last but not not the least, which I I feel about that we need to think in the in the North Indian that we need to give a proper definition to ecotourism. because we know that although we are discussing ecotourism uh, for the last i mean 20 25 years in our indian context but if you just see some of the western uh, I mean side of the country where if you just go there and then see that in the name of ecotourism it is commercial tourism so so uh, although the government of india and now the ministry of environment they have come up with the ecotourism guidelines but still we need to work out that we we need to focus upon that and again i would like to say that this issue is also need to be have a site specific you cannot have a uniform ecotourism guidelines or some sort of things which will be fit into all all the states and particularly here where we need to understand the society you need to understand the, the cultural values or the ethnic values of the the area you need to understand so that's why what i'm giving a focus much more about that uh, like home stays which we talk about that if you try to promote home stays in northeastern region where uh, it's not only staying uh, there but even showcasing the cuisine showcasing the culture of the particular ethnic uh, or you can say tribal community is one of the important factor where all these things in one package can be given to the tourists so that was the issue or we need to understand and we need to give much more focus about it. so what i my if you will ask me dr uh, shama that these are a the couple of issues which i am handling it i am trying to to understand and doing it at the state level or at the you can say regional level that is the north uh please uh, yeah my and yeah sorry at the heart thank you very much it's such a valuable input you have given to us so much of information in such a limited time you have given to us at the heart when we see uh, particularly when we have to see something for the youth something we have to see for our upcoming generation they should believe in conservation also they should believe in preservation also at the same time because i still recall and recollect while being with the ministry of tourism kana national park first time Uh, there was a tourist interpretation center that was a visitor interpretation center sort of a thing which had come up over there and late kalas santla ji when he initiated the project tiger and everything on the conservation now for the northeast youth and particularly during this uh, pandemic during this lockdown a uh, lot of travel agents and tour operators and tourist transporters all of them they have suffered heavily in the msme sector now to rejuvenate to revive to reequip to refurbish what exactly can be done if you can give some vision some idea uh, where the environment protection is also there interpretation is also there and some kind of a opening is also there for future uh yeah dr sir what what uh, we are doing it and then we are like uh, what you are uh, connecting with the people uh, in all over the world through this webinar because definitely uh, movements are quite restricted now at, 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 in the present scenario so what we are doing for example i will tell you in kaziranga national park we have a pretty in particular range we have 200 jeep safaris now there are there are hardly any tourists this is also a closure of natural parks also so how to engage them how to give them some sort of motivation so they can understand so so what can be done so what we are planning to do first thing to understand and make them understand the, the the issue of some of the environmental issues related to that area also and that's why i've just mentioned about that i am just trying to change or modify the mandate or objectives of the protected areas and national para in terms of in from the perspective of tourism so that is also important and that's why i have just discussed with that and then trying to give some sort of focus on wellness some sort of focus on yoga so if we can have a big package of all these things into it so it's not that and then our main focus is first to attract the tourists within assam 
then we can think of then coming from the neighboring states and then we will come to a national level and international level over the uh, couple of months but definitely we need to so that's why now we are trying to give them training uh, the local people in terms of all these things which are a new you can say new or exposer to all of us another issue and which we have uh, been uh, totally engaged into in this because in this uh, you require for the covid 19 you require a lot of covid warriors also to understand this problem and then you have to have many volunteers also so we are giving the local villages and neighboring people people also a lot of trainings in it and then trying to understand so it's not only that you will be acting as a guide to the protected areas you will tell them about us but other than you will try to give them some some sort of you can say protocols of health protocols which we need to follow so all these things we are doing uh, in 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 this aspect another aspect which i was just trying to tell doctor because i am very happy to share with you that uh, when you talk about national education policy and then if you know about that that is actually it was strength plus 2 and now the present uh, policy is talk is talks about 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 and this five years first because initially it was in in the last policy it was from the at the age of 6 to 18 but now it is 3 to 18 that is very important because first five years as a preparatory you can say the foundation so it is very important so you have to have certain foundation you have to have certain preparatory you have to have middle and secondary another in, 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 you can say usp or what i find it in this present education policy is this that now they have given much more importance to vocational education vocational education and environmental education and if you think about that and if you just go through this in the 12th five year plan when i was a part of uh, ministry of dona then hardly 5% uh, workforce and uh, there is a study also which they have done it that uh, the workforce in the age of 19 to 24 age only 5% were given uh, vocational training Vis-a-vis, if you talk about USA, which is 52 percent, Germany 75 percent. I mean, in South Korea, 96 percent of the youth they have got their vocational training. So this time, this policy giving some sort of importance to the vocational training and whatever we are discussing about to give some sort of enhancement to the local villages in and around protected areas or reserve forests, definitely this vocational training will be much more important. Wonderful. Although they have not elaborated because I have gone through the education policy. In, in terms of in, environmental education because but we all know about in the last 10 to 15 years in the name of evs now it, they have started from 2004 and 5 and now they are giving in assam also we have prepared some sort of you can say training uh, module also for them from 6 7 if 9 10 students where in in assamese also and in english also what sort of environmental education because it is very important to start all these things from the beginning because now we all know about what sort of problems we are facing in terms of climate change and we all know that during this 3 4 months if things were not done in a commercial way the environmental side it is much more improved we all know i mean i mean that and that is a positive aspect of this covid 19 so another angle which if you ask me about that i can give you in this national education policy and then how much education vis-a-vis environment is given one issue which i would love to uh, not discuss earlier that we are giving much more importance to the medicinal and uh, aromatic plants now because you are mentioning about that and when we talk about wellness and hygiene and we talk about yoga then definitely we need to understand about that and uh, uh, here we have uh, the member secretary of the assam state medicinal plant board uh, is is an uh, ifs officer and uh, in a close coordination with the state medicinal plant board or ministry of ayush we have prepared an action plan for us and we all know about that because uh, we have already have a lot of documentation on how much rich uh, medicinal values do we have in our forest area or outside the forest area. but definitely for example now we are thinking about we all know about giloe everybody is now using giloe juice now in terms of this covid 19 it is kinosporia carifolia then there is another sarpa gandha there will like there are there are many sort of things then is araka asoka there is the uh, ashok uh, plantations are, are, are there then we talk about piper longum is is there i mean there there is alpine and tundra species for it all so all these issues which we are discussing about that in addition to that we are establishing the mandis and we are calling it oshadhi dham 
so we we are uh, we are just constituting or uh, you can say making mandis mandis for medicinal plants where the i mean the local villagers those who grow their medicinal plants they will get a platform to sell it so so that heart we will call it a mandis and we will call it a aushadi dham so so that's the thing which we are doing it we are also setting up drug testing laboratories also which we are doing it uh, that it it's being done and then in addition to that we are going to have a massive afforestation of these medicinal plants in our degraded areas also so these are the things and then we are getting lot of funds also and then i have requested the member secretary also that we need to take only 10 commercially viable medicinal plants which are available here in our state and then we will go for massive plantation or afforestation i'm not trying to say only within the forest area in the outside the forest area also because uh, now here also if you talk about in assam patanjali and dabar they have come in a big way and they are also doing their own plantations taking in with the collaboration of the local villagers so we are also trying to be a party to that and how best can be utilized some sort of try by try or with the these agencies and then try to encourage the medicinal plants commercially that is also one of the important aspect which we are at okay on my facebook sir there is a question yeah they are asking ki that uh, when you are talking about wellness when you are talking about herbal plants when you are talking about medicinal plants and when you are talking about ministry of ayush uh, do we take it that uh, the these the 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 uh, senses or uh, ground uh, kind of a uh, survey has already been carried out to identify which are the medicinal plants available in state of assam yeah so here this exercise we have already done okay we have already listing about and then for example now we are one one step ahead now we okay. have taken 25 schools now uh in assam where we are going to have our school herbal garden and what we are doing in this 25 schools as a school herbal garden is this whatever listing of these medicinal plants we have already done it based on the site specific species we are trying to showcase these herbal and medicinal plants in these school herbal garden so starting from the beginning like we are talking about environmental education from the beginning from the sixth standard so mm -hmm. i was thinking about the students should also have a better exposure of the medicinal and herbal plants from the beginning that's why we are starting this uh, pilot project in 25 it's a very interesting concept and i think everybody world over is getting that the government of assam has taken an initiative would you like to uh, elaborate little bit more sir what exactly the school herbal garden when we are talking about if you can little bit amplify so that we get little more details on to that that these 25 schools uh, what standard what children what exactly and uh, these um, herbal gardens which will come up the cultivation which will be there would that be further utilized or is it basically to give them the orientation what exactly up to what level you are taking it sir uh, here this is schools uh, plantations will just be for to create an awareness it is not for that that we are going to take any sort of project because it is a very small area covering it but what we are planning to do it in that in these is, is herbal gardens we will have for example 700 trees of saraka ashoka that is ashok plantations will be there then we will have herbs like uh sugandha mantri will be there sarp gandha will be there kashur will be there then pipali will be there so like this then we will have certain three species also agar and chandan will be there nageshwar will be there katha will be there jamun will be there then we will have brihat panchamul cultivation of five species that is stereospermum melaina oxymel so eagle mamilos so there are many so we have already developed some sort of action plan that how we are going to and what we are going to do in this school herbal garden so that is another aspect which we are taking wonderful wonderful what message would you like to give to people those are watching in asean what linkage can be built between northeast part of india and asean uh uh it is there is a very close linkage whatever i could observe it and in my earlier uh deputation period also 
that I'm just looking into the, the culture and the, the values also, you can say. It is closely associated with And the, the way their food habits, the way their cuisines are there, the, the way their use of spices in terms of medicinal and urban plants, it is much more similar to, to these countries also. And we have a better connectivity, better, you can say, uh, less distance than if you one wants to travel from here to Delhi or one wants to travel to, to different places, it is much more. So I'm just trying to, because we all know about that, whether it is Look East or Act East policy. I mean, that definitely with the present uh, central government is also keeping a lot of focus into it. And I would like to add on a little bit more about my, my earlier assignment into it, that uh, this development of Northeastern region, that is the Ministry of Donor, the whole concept of developing this, uh, earlier it was a department under a, a home office that finally in 2004, it was uh, as a full-fledged ministry. So one other aspect is to develop these eight states, including Sikkim. Another aspect is that how to have a better linkage with the neighboring countries and then how it will be done. So we, do, we have to have a more B2B at that time. We were having B2B discussions also. We are having more and more border hearts also in, in terms of Manipur and Nagaland. There are certain days where they can come to, I mean, that it is in a particular week, they can come to a proper area, they can sell their products and basically we are focusing all these sectors. So there is much more uh, positiveness is there and there is much more things which have been done and then we are also doing it. But I'm quite positive that in the years to come, we are going to have more and more collaboration with Ashka. Wonderful. What message would you like to give to the youth who wish to be a part of ecotourism, nature tourism, wellness tourism, wildlife tourism, green tourism, flora and fauna tourism, any name we can give it. What message would you like to give to the youth? Uh, my message is this because uh, we all know that education is a continuous process. I mean, if you'll ask me at this age also, the, the way I read it, the way I want to learn, it is the same which I was in their 20s. So for the youth, my message is this, that you have to update yourself in any of the sector. And another angle which I was thinking about initially, I mentioned about that, I will, it's not only youth, I would like to, through this forum, I would like to address my younger generation also in the Indian Forest Service also. That unless until you will not make yourself professional. So I always, uh, you can say, strong promoter for professionalizing the Indian Forest Service. So, and then earlier, what we used to think about that, this is our work, this is our duty. But unless until you will not sell yourself as a commodity. And then how you can do it? Just, just by having imbibing some other knowledge. So what I'm you are trying to say, I will I will just say to the youth, those who are listening or those who are a part of this region, that choose one of the area of your own interest. Try to make your passion, your hobby into uh, your profession. Then then you will get a lot of satisfaction. And I will tell you. There is no dearth of uh, opportunities in Northeast region if you talk about any sort of tourism, whether it is adventure, whether it is eco-tourism, whether it is... I mean, I mean you name them, or the medical tourism, everything is here. But we need to streamline them, we need to educate ourselves. But I have seen in the last four, five years, a lot of entrepreneurs have come in Northeast. And I have come to know that uh, they are doing, not even nationally, they are doing so much good work internationally. Wonderful. So, so lastly, which, which I mean, because I would like to say about my own uh, vision or you can say for the environment and forest as that, because we need to think about inclusive forestry for prosperity and posterity. So if you'll ask me or if you will try to say that how you're going to, in nutshell, you will say about uh, in one sentence that what do you feel? Because whatever you discuss about production, forestry, protection, forestry, wildlife management, uh, life, giving livelihood to the local people, tourism, all sort of things. So we need to have inclusive forestry. But what, for what? For prosperity and posterity. So these two things, so I, I will just say the, the, the vision, if you'll ask me that for the Assam, it is inclusive forestry for prosperity and posterity. For prosperity and? and posterity. I mean that. Okay. 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 This one question from UK from Dr. Barbara. 
that uh, there are challenges in the rhino protection in Assam, your national animal. So what special measures are being taken for that? Because rhino is very precious uh, animal as far as uh, Assam and the country is concerned. Yeah, I mean, uh, it will, uh, we are giving topmost priority uh, for the rhino protection. And you know, in the last two years, if you will just see the number of Rhino poaching, it is in single digit. And if you'll ask me in the last 18, 19 uh, months of my, there as a head of the forest force, this is number two, only two. Last year and then one unfortunately had happened in day for yesterday. So what, what sort of measures we are taking, it, it's not only that our networking and the cooperation with district administration and police, it's much more uh, fruitful and better. And our honorable chief minister is personally taking because he had constituted a task force of district administration, police, and forest of the five districts, neighboring districts of Kaziranga National Park, which are 24 into 7, they are protecting the rhino. So that's why number, but we are now using a lot of modern tools in monitoring and protection, like we have electronic eye also. And then which we are, we are using, we are having camera traps also. We are just trying to use the harbor sensors also. We are using drones also now. So there are, then we have a special rhino protection force exclusively having commando training and then exclusively for the Kazir and Park. We are using the drones also? Yeah, we are using the drones also. And day for yesterday, because you know that there is a flood time. Most of the Kaziranga National Park or all the protected areas are inundated. So suppose if you'd like to trace out any sort of poaching other things, how will you do that? So we are taking the, the help of the drones and now they are trying to get the help of that. Even for the uh, elephant depredation also, we are using uh, drones and we are giving, we are getting very good results for it. Wonderful, wonderful. Final word from you, sir. What message would you like to give to all my brothers and sisters, those are in travel and tourism fraternity and they are passing through a difficult times at this point of time because it comes under the MSME sector and the micro, small and medium enterprise, when I talk about the entire tourism, the hospitality, the airlines, the retail, the media entertainment and all linked sectors, you know, they all are passing through a very difficult time. Of course, it's a part of life. We got to take it in a positive way, but some preparation to be done for future as well. When the things get better and things get normal, is there anything would you like to tell them so that uh, they can prepare themselves? I can only say about that because this is not for the particular, this region, the whole world is suffering from that. And definitely, I understand that MSCB here or in tourism sector is badly affected. We need to have patience into it. But what again, I will go back to my point is that we are trying to find out uh, to change the mandate and objectives now, taking it as a lesson and understanding that because it's not only for today, even in near future to come, we need to understand that. But I would like to request or have uh, some sort of a suggestion to them. Have uh, patience. I mean, that definitely this is a passing phase. It will also go. And we will definitely come to an era with proper positive zeal and enthusiasm to again go back to our normal days where we will have a lot of tourists. If you talk about a particular area where there will be a lot of happiness, a lot of satisfaction with more than zeal and enthusiasm, what we have. Wonderful, wonderful, ladies and gentlemen, from world over, those have joined me on the Facebook, on the watch parties at different places. I'm so grateful because there's so much of pouring in and everybody is extremely, extremely happy. And this is from the first person who is heading the entire as a chief conservator forest. You know, I am mean, nothing, principal chief conservator forest, nothing could have been much better than to get the inputs right from him. You all requested me. And I have taken up all the concerns in every area. So with these words, my deepest regards and great gratitude to, and so much to share with him, you know, and so much to learn from him. I saw him earlier in the donor ministry also, and I see him now also at the helm of the affairs as a principal chief conservator forest. I mean, it's an amazing work and look at, at heart, sir, you are a teacher. I personally feel you are not a bureaucrat. You are a teacher. And that 25, uh, you know, this, uh, what you have given me, 
25 schools, school herbal garden. Once again, your uh, that academic element and your education element and that background somewhere gives the fragrance over there. Now I would request Dr. Barbara Maas, who is again an environmentalist and uh, you know a, a protectionist who is doing a project at present in Assam all the way from UK. She will propose a vote of thanks. Nothing could have been more pious as an effort that it is an afternoon lunch time in India where we have got Dr. Arvind Madhav Singh Ji, the principal chief conservator forest as a distinguished speaker of today with the entire global fraternity. And I have got the lady with the breakfast in UK, Dr. Barbara Maas, proposing a vote of thanks. Kindly unmute your mic, ma'am, so that we can take you and you can propose your vote of thanks and you can share your vision with him. Thank you very much. Uh, this was very interesting. It's a great pleasure, sir, um, to meet you across the globe. And I think it's a meeting of minds and a meeting of hearts. And Dr. Sharma, thank you so much for making this possible and for creating this opportunity to hear it from the man who has all these problems that he's juggling. Um, major headache. I don't envy you <laughs> this <laughs> job. And I share your vision of a holistic long-term view. Yes. Um, I was very much encouraged. And at heart, he's a teacher. He at is. Heart, he's yes. a professor. At heart, he's an educationist. I always saw him in the ministry also talking about capacity building, talking about skills, talking about empowering youth, talk, talking, you know, all the time, educators. And you, you see the reflection over here. He has come up to the school level. So, Dr. Barbara. Yeah, can I just, uh, I just wanted to... Oh to show you very quickly, uh, if I may. One slide you are permitted to propose in voters. Okay, don't worry about it. I'll leave it then. <laughs> um, I just wanted to, to, I know your lunch, your curry is waiting. <laughs> so, yes, so I wanted to say thank you to you for the enormous work you and your team is doing. And I'm very proud to be involved in a tiny, tiny way um, through our support for Aranyak, working, supporting the work done by the forest department, by the police. Our focus is mainly um, rhino and um, tiger conservation. But if we protect those, if we protect them, we protect every everything else as well. They are like ambassadors for for the wild areas of your beautiful of your beautiful Assam and I congratulate you on your fantastic anti-poaching uh, success of two rhinos if you compare that with what's happening in Africa in particular in South Africa um, you win with flying colors and I think that um, there should be some dialogue about lessons teach Africa, how to protect its rhinos. I think we need this <laughs> because we're losing them hand over fist. And you are doing such a great job. Um, all the people on the ground who are now out there in searing heat, braving the floods um, during a pandemic. I applaud each of them from the, from the you know, from the lady or the gentleman who makes the tea to the rangers, to the policemen, to the administrators, to all of you, all of the people who work with you to make this success happen. I am so grateful and I'm delighted to be able to link hands from donors in Europe, in India, wherever they may be to support this work. I consider us to be one team us, our partners, Aranyak, the forest department, the police, all of us with a common goal to help nature because if there is no nature, there won't be any us. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Barbara, ma'am, for proposing word of thanks for a man, the man of the day, the man of the vision, the man of the future, because always whenever I met him, Whenever I deliberated anything with him in any position in the last 10 years, ladies and gentlemen, he is a person at heart 
he always wants to see how the environment to be protected how the youth to be empowered and how the entire process of the ecosystem to be taken further sir we will be looking forward to visiting those 25 schools which you are bringing basically because that's a new vision you have given to me and that's the thought which you have given to me this afternoon and i never knew being so closely linked with northeast that you are having drones also in the forest department hovering and taking care of the entire protection nothing could have been better my great salutation regards and thanks to you for sharing your vision and thank you dr barbara you can go for the breakfast and i can request him he can have his own lunch because we all are coming in a digital yes. <laughs> so, thank you, thank you dr barbara thank you dr sharma thank, thank you thank you so much thank you it was such a pleasure and thanks to all the audience from the world over wherever you are you are having this program live on the facebook but within next half an hour you can see it on the youtube as well thank you very much everybody thanks for joining and thank you very much once again dr a